This is Mr. ChaiPai, and today we are going to learn about modifiers in Blender. Modifiers allow us to quickly make complex modifications to our mesh non-destructively. So to find the modifiers, we go over to our side properties panel, and under this wrench icon, we got our modifiers. There are four different categories of modifiers. We got modify, which modifies the data about our mesh vertices. We got generate, which adds or subtracts vertices and makes other modifications. We got deform, which modifies the location of our vertices. And we got simulate, which do physics simulations, such as cloth or fluid. Now the simulate ones are a little bit weird because if I add it here, it doesn't have any settings and you have to go to the physics tab, which is the last one, to go to the settings. Okay, so the first one we're gonna learn about is the subdivision surface. So we go to add modifier, generate subdivision su surface. And what this does is it divides our mesh into more loops and smooths it out. If you don't want it to be smoothed out, you can switch from Catmull Clark to simple. So I'm gonna just switch back. And under our other controls, we got our, the amount of subdivisions in our viewport, the amount of subdivisions in our render, and the quality of the subdivisions. So you don't wanna to go too high up with these or else Blender will crash, but I'm gonna bring up the viewport a little bit. And now we see that it basically made a ball. Now, if I tab into edit mode, you'll see that we still have our base cube here, which is one of the reasons why modifiers are great because it's completely non-destructive we don't get rid of our base mesh. So I can continue to modify it and it will adjust the shape for me. There are two ways to control how smoothed out the edges become. One way is I could press Control R and add another loop and slide it over and it will crease the edges for me. The other way is I can go and grab the edges and press Shift E and it will also crease the edges and it will highlight these edges purple. The extra loop method is better if you want it to look nicer, but the edge crease method with shift E is better if you want to keep the poly count low. So next I'm going to cut this in half for the mirror modifier. I'm going to switch here and I'm going to go to wireframe, hit B, select these and delete these vertices. And I'm going to go back to solid view and then I'm going to add generate mirror and it's on the wrong axis so I'm going to switch from the x-axis to the y-axis and now what this does is it mirrors our mesh so that we can do half the work if we have a symmetric mesh we got a few more options other than just the axis here one that we have is bisect which got rid of everything so I'm going to flip it what bisect does is it will take everything on the opposite side of the mirror and it will just cut it off. So say I grab this edge here and I move it over here, it's cut off. Instead of bisect, we could have clipping on, which basically just snaps everything when it hits the middle. So I can't move it anymore now that I see the middle. And we got merge, which will just combine these vertices here. If I turn off merge, every vertice in the middle will be duplicated and the two halves will be unconnected. One important thing to know about the mirror modifier is that this little orange dot in the middle, the origin point is where our mirror is. So if I say move the mirror, move my 3D cursor here, tabbed out of edit mode, hit right click, then set origin to 3D cursor, the mirror is now over there. And if I hit shift C to center everything out and the, including the 3D cursor. And if I hit right click again and set the origin to 3D cursor, it'll be back to where it was before. Next up, we got our bevel modifier, which just adds a bevel among all of the edges. The first important setting is the width, which changes how wide the bevel is. The segments, which change how many segments are in the bevel. The profile, which changes the 
I need more segments for that, which changes the profile of the, the bevel and the material, which will decide what material slot goes onto this bevel. We also got different limit methods. So I could limit where the bevels are placed by the angle. So if I had like a curve area where I don't want the extra bevels, it will not do it and only put it on these sharp edges. Other important settings include only vertices and clamp overlap, which will sometimes fix some weird issues that you're having if you turn it off. Next up, I'm gonna go with the weighted normal modifier, which goes well with the bevel modifier. So if I hit right click, shave smooth, you'll see that the smoothing is kind of weird. So if I add more segments, it will improve it, but that adds to the poly count. So if I only wanted to have one for maybe a game where you wanna keep the poly count low, I could go to this triangle, turn on auto smooth under normals. Then I could go back to the wrench to add modifier for way to normal. And it will modify the normal direction based off the face area, which will make it look more like the high poly version. Next up, I have a little plane. And let's say I want to make this thicker. Well, I could easily do that by adding a solidify modifier. And this adds just a little bit of thickness to our plane. And I could maybe subdivide it and it will continue to be thicker. So this is good for like making cloth. Next up, we're gonna go with an array modifier, which basically just adds more of these. And I can move the offset to give a little bit of space. I have different count modes so I could do it by fitting a curve maybe, if I have a curve. I have different types of offset, such as relative offset, which does it based off the size of our model. I got constant offset, which does it based off of actual measurements like meters or feet. And I also got object offset, which I could add in. And this is useful if I wanted to add like rotation or scaling to it. So I could add an empty, and I'll just use a plain axis. And I'm just going to go and select my cube, select my empty, select my empty, and now I can rotate it, maybe among the x-axis. And this would be good for making chains, where I could take each chain link and rotate it along an array. I could scale it, and each of these would get bigger. Next, I got the triangulate modifier, which simply triangulates all of our polygons in our mesh which can be useful if you're like exporting because some of the settings don't work with n-gons, which are faces with more than four sides. Next up, let's say I have a super high definition mesh, like a sculpt that I need to bring the poly count down for. Maybe I'm putting in the game. I could use the decimate modifier to automatically do that for me. So I could bring this ratio down and it will try to keep the same shape but with a lower poly count. And there's different modes, like there's clap, there's unsubdivide, which will work a little bit differently. There's planar, which does it based off angle. So all of these work a little bit differently and give different results. Now this is okay for doing something that doesn't have to change shape, like a character which is gonna animate. But if you're doing the character that's gonna animate, you're gonna wanna do it manually because it's gonna cause lots of weird shading issues. Next up, we're gonna go with a skin modifier. To do this, I'm just gonna go and select all these and hit Alt-M at center and have one vertice and I'm going to add the skin modifier. And I'm going to grab my vertice and hit E to extrude. E to extrude again. Maybe I'll grab this other one, hit E to extrude. And what this does is it basically adds mesh around the vertices, which is useful for making base meshes. Now, if I select this and press Control A, it will change the size of it. So I could use this to make a base mesh for a sculpt such as making a tree from this, or I could use it for maybe a person. But now we have a very bad tree or antler. And then I could add a subdivision surface over this to make it smoother. So now my next modifier is the lattice modifier. I'm gonna add that. 
I'm gonna hit Shift A and add a lattice. I'm gonna go back to my cube. I'm gonna go to the last modifier and select my lattice. Then grab my lattice here. And then hit Tab to go into edit mode. And I can grab these vertices and move it up and it will adjust the shape of my cube based off the location of the lattice. Next up, I'm gonna do a curve. So I'm gonna to go to deform, curve. Then I'm gonna shift A, add a curve, Bezier. And if you see wireframe, this is what it looks like. A little curve. So I can go into this guy and I can select my Bezier curve and it's gonna go along this curve. So if I scale this curve up, you'll see it's big. And this cube is going along the curve and I can move this And it'll keep up with the shape of the curve. And if I hit scale X, it will get bigger and keep up with the shape of the curve. The last modifier I'm going to show to you today is the shrink wrap. I'm going to go and add a echo sphere. I'm going to scale it up. And I'm going to add the shrink wrap to it. So shrink wrap right here. I'm going to put the target as Suzanne. And it will try to shape itself to Suzanne by wrapping around it and shrinking. This makes retopology easier. Next up, we got the Boolean modifier. So what I have here is a Susan or monkey head. Just that is intersecting with my cube. So I'm going to go to the cube, add modifier, Boolean. And I'm going to hide my monkey head, go back to it, go here, choose Suzanne, which is the monkey head, and you'll see that under difference, it will subtract the monkey head from the cube. If I switched it to intersect, it'll take only where the cube and the monkey head are intersecting. And if I do union, it'll combine the cube and the monkey head. Now, there used to be two different solvers, or like algorithms, I guess you could say. They had BMesh and they had Carve, which each one of those worked better in certain circumstances. But they got rid of Carve, so I'm hoping that they got rid of most of the circumstances where BMesh didn't work well in, but Carve did. Next, I'm going to show you about modifier order. So I have this mesh. It's been mirrored and subdivided. Now, because it was mirrored first at the top, the subdivision surface worked on the mirrored mesh and then curved it. But if I brought the mirror down to the bottom, the subdivision surface works on the base mesh and then it gets mirrored. So here it gets pointy where it w otherwise was curved. So modifiers at the top are applied first. Next up, we also have the view options. First, we have this little camera, which decides whether it's shown when it's rendered. We also have this little monitor guy, which shows the modifier in the viewport. So if I pressed it here, it will hide in the viewport. Next, if I tab into edit mode, it has display modifier in edit mode. So if I turn that off, it'll hide the modifier. And if I turn it back on, it'll show the modifier, but it'll also have like a cage kind of look for the base mesh. At the end here, we have adjust edit cage to modifier result. And if I press this, it'll show the result of the modifier and I can actually edit the modified one. If I press it again for the subdivision surface, it's gonna give me these curved faces. And I'm gonna work on the rocket some more. So I'm gonna to need to go to the body and add a subdivision surface modifier on it. Maybe bring it up to two. And I'm going to go tab into edit mode and I'm going to go hit two, grab these edges with alt click and I'm going to hit shifty. I'm going to bring these up a bit. So now that they are smoothed out here, I'm going to do it with control R to add more loops to crease these. Now, one thing is at the top here, we're going to have a little bit of a shading error, which is kind of hard to see because I did a point here. And subdivision surfaces don't like to work well with triangles 
and polygons that aren't quads. So what I could do is I could go one, delete this vertice, go here, and I'm gonna hit F3 and I'm gonna search for grid, fill. And it'll fill it with a grid of quads. And I'm just gonna grab this, hit G, Z, bring it up, and now it's in quads. Next up, I'll go here and we'll see a similar issue where I have a five-sided polygon here. I can go to the side. I can press K to grab my knife. Hit Z to cut through to the other end. Hit C to go on an angle constraint. And then hit enter. And now I got two quads. And I can go and hit subdivision surface now. I'm gonna bring it up to two. And I'm going to crease these edges by hitting Control R. Maybe I'll keep that one smooth here. And what I'm going to need to do is I'm going to go into wireframe, hit 1, hit B to select all of these. And I'm going to go to local to do it based off the rotation. I hit G, Y and I can just move it back into there. Now I'm gonna go and hit right click shade smooth and I'm going to add the subdivision surface to all the fins now. Now there's actually a shortcut to adding a subdivision surface. If you're in object mode, I can just hit control and then one, two, three, depending on what amount I want of subdivisions. So I can hit control two, grab this, control two, grab this, control two. Next, I'm going to grab this guy I'm going to hit control two again, because why not Hit tab to edit mode. I'm actually going to just delete this face here and that'll actually make it hard anyway. Go back to global, hit GX and I'm going to go hit control R, add a loop here, add a loop here. With this one, maybe I'll go and hit shift E to sharpen it. Grab this one that's hidden, shifty, sharpen it. Grab this one, shifty, sharpen it. And now it's nice. And I'm gonna right click, hit shade smooth. And here we have some of the shading errors that come from this guy being a n-gon. I have eight sides, so an octagon. I'm just gonna delete this face. And I'm gonna hit two, grab here. And I'm going to hit F3, going to hit grid fill again, and now it's filled. Now I'll show this again, and you can see that the smoothing is better. Now I got this guy, which I accidentally added too many loops with my spin. So I'm going to remove a few of these loops just by control alt selecting them. And hitting dissolve edges. Maybe I'll grab this one too. And then I'm gonna add a subdivision surface. I'm just gonna hit, I'm just gonna keep it at one. And I'm going to go and delete these faces here. I'm gonna go into wireframe so I can grab them. And this one. Delete these faces, because they're not gonna be seen. And I'm going to go and G X a little because it's not inside. Now we got our rocket. This was Mr. Tripie, and thanks for watching. If you like this video, please like and subscribe to help my channel grow. Thank you.